did this become the most popular book of 2023? Like that entire thing feels like a fever dream to me, not gonna lie to you. What's up guys, my name is Lou and these are my books. Today we're going to be talking about books with dragons that are not fourth wing. I wanted to compile this list for a really long time, but like things just kind of got out of hand for me. I, listen, listen, listen. I know I talk about fourth wing a lot on my channel at this point, but it's like one of the, it's one of the only books that I just genuinely have disliked so much in my entire reading career. I'm literally sitting here like, who put this out? Like, why is this like the most popular book? of 2023 how did this become the most popular book of 2023 how did this get any amount of popular and i come to the conclusion that a lot of people liked it for the nostalgia and then and then there were the people who didn't have taste <laughs> that liked it unironically and so i'm just out here like because i've heard someone told me once that it was the most quintessential dragon book she'd ever read. And I'm like, you have to be kidding. <laughs> you have to be joking. You have to be actually fucking around with me. You're joking. You're joking. Because there are so many other better books than, than Fourth Wing with dragons in them. So I've compiled a list of books that are be that I can guarantee you are better than Fourth Wing. I haven't read all of them. Um, however, I'm in the process of reading one of them. And I also have gone through the reviews for these as well as uh, read like the first lines, first chapters of these as well. And you know, so I can tell you that they at least start off quality. Okay? Okay? with confidence. I can tell you that. So allow us to get started. Of this list, I actually only own four of these books. Um, so the first one we have is Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, obviously. It's an adult book. Um, adult books always are always, in my opinion, like written better than YA or New Adult new adult I still don't think it's like an actual genre like that an entire like that entire thing feels like a fever dream to me not gonna lie to you this is a full-on adult book with dragons in it um it has an entire culture surrounding dragons I believe there are dragon writers in it as well um so let me uh, let me uh read you the description of this book and also like tell you why personally this book interests me and why I decided to get it as well as why I personally believe that it's better than Fourth Wing. Even though I have not read this. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. A world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. The house of... <laughs> Sorry. The house of Berretnet... Ber... Berethnet... Berethnet, okay sorry the house of Barathnet has ruled Aeneas for a thousand years still unwed queen sabrin the ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from discretion from destruction but but assassins are creeping closer and closer to her door Iad durian is an outsider at court though she has risen to the position of lady in waiting she is loyal to the hidden society of mages Iad keeps a watchful eye on sabrin secretly protecting her with forbidden magic Across the Dark Sea, Tan has trained to be a dragon rider since she was a child, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parlay, for and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. So, something about this book. Again, so, when I picked up Fourth Wing, I immediately, what interested me was the setting of, like, a war college. You know, all of that brutality, all of that posed brutality, all of the, um like interpolitics and especially with Violet being the daughter of the like overarching commander of the entire thing you would think that there would be a lot more politics and that there would be a lot more people like actually like you know attempting to attempt making attempts on her life 
um, slash, you know, like actually trying to get her out of the running because people will see her as like, oh, well, she has an advantage because she's this person's daughter. So she obviously had so much training, blah, 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 whatever, right? You would think so. You would think that that book would have so much more than it does. Um, however, I read the first chapter of Prior of the Orange Tree and I immediately did want to start it, but I knew that me starting this book would have to be a deliberate choice not an emotional one because a it's long as fuck but admire the edges but it, it is a long fucking book this book is like over 800 pages i believe but in my experience with adult books usually usually typically adult books typically have a lot going for them because they have more deliberate world building they have more deliberate like they actually feel planned out because with adult books you really have to like go into it knowing what you're getting into. And so when I read the first chapter of this book, I immediately was like, oh, this is a world that feels like it came out of war. This is a world that feels amazingly well thought out. I and it was just the first chapter. We haven't even seen any of the politics. We haven't even seen like we we had barely seen like even like one of our main characters just yet. I think we we only saw uh Tene, Tene. I don't I don't know her name. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I we only saw Tene, I think, and we didn't even get introduced to her. She just like kind of appeared and then was like, here, take this guy. <laughs> and then at the end of the first chapter, we see a dragon. So obviously, book with dragon, you know? But honestly, I genuinely I've heard that this book ends in a very anticlimactic way that people that a lot of that some people are fond of some people are not I personally am not going to look at that because I like to go into books knowing about as little as possible with low expectations um not because I expect I don't expect like good things however I do I do want to go into books without like any sort of um like biased judgments you know what I mean um especially if it's if it's a new author to me so uh Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon a book with dragons that is not fourth way all right so next uh book that we have is Fireborn by Rosaria Munda so I don't own this book. Um, however, I did find the like uh, description on Goodreads. So I'm going to read that to you. However, I have been meaning to pick this series up. It's a trilogy, I believe. Trilogy or quartet? I can't remember. And there's also like, you know, actual stakes emotional stakes, and I like it. <laughs> Annie and Lee were just children when a brutal revolution changed the world, giving everyone, even the lowborn, a chance to test the governing, a test into the governing class of dragon riders. Now they are both rising to, now they are both rising stars in the new regime, despite backgrounds that couldn't be more different. Annie's lowborn family was executed by dragon fire, while Lee's aristocratic family was murdered by, re by revolutionaries. Growing up in the same orphanage forged their friendship, and seven years of training have made them rivals for the top position in the dragon riding, dragon riding fleet. But everything changes when survivors of the old regime surface, help, bent on reclaiming the city. With war on the horizon and his relationship with Annie changing fast, Lee must choose to kill. Lee must choose to kill the only family he has left, or or to betray everything he's come to believe in. And Annie must decide whether to whether to protect the boy she loves or step up to be the champion her city needs. See, and that is something that's really interesting to me because. Again, I did read the first chapter and I was like, ooh, ooh, interesting. Because the thing about this is that it really brings out, like, this is giving what Fourth Wing should have. Like, in my opinion, I think. Because, like, again, Violet and Zayden's little positioning thing makes them perfect rivals, right? You, It, it isn't even, it isn't even rivals to lovers either. Because... Zayden is part of Zayden is the child of like a dead revolutionary and Violet is the product of the system that he it, that he was raised to resent you know it's perfect setup but no 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 that that didn't happen anyways anyways but this book um what really intrigues me about it is the fact that there is so much 
like on the line for both of these characters because they both have what they're expected to do and then they both have what they want to do and they have to choose between the two of between the two of those at the risk of hurting of harming each other and themselves with their choices there's no real winning here because like their decisions will impact everything absolutely everything if they choose to stay together then everything then every then they both risk being executed but if they choose to play their parts then they then they separate and it becomes really sad so it's like what the hell why <sighs> so i personally am really excited to pick up this book uh well these books anyways because, you know, like a crazy person, I pick up entire series before I read the first book because I'm just that kind of person. But genuinely, I personally just, I really, really, I, I'm really, really excited to actually get into this book. I'm not looking at any of the reviews because I don't want to see what other people think of it. But I have heard decent things about this book, so and it's also YA, so it should read pretty easy as well. Um, next book is one that again I own. It is uh, Dragonfall by uh, L. R. Lamb. So this book is actually an interesting kind of uh, thing. I remember reading the first chapter of this and was like, "Oh, oh, oh, okay, I see, I see you." Um, because the way, th there's also a second book coming out of this. I do not remember when. I'm gonna have to look on Amazon because I don't remember and I'm probably gonna pre-order it. All right. <laughs> Anyways, this book, uh, does not follow the pattern of the first two, um, in the fact that, um, it involves a dragon falling in love with a human. And that's not as weird as it think, as you think it is. So let me, uh, let me read you the description. <laughs> Long ago, humans betrayed dragons, stealing their magic and banishing them to a dying to a dying world. Centuries later, their centuries later, their descendants worship dragons as gods, but the gods remember and they do not forgive. Thief Arcady scrapes a living scrapes a living on the streets of Vatra. Desperate, desperate, Arcady steals a powerful artifact from the bones of the plague bringer, the most hated dragon in the hated hate the most hated person in Lumet history. Only Arcady knows the art knows the artifact's magic holds the key to a new life among the nobles at court and a chance for revenge. The spell connects to Evren, the last male dragon foretold to save his kind. Dragging the, dragging him through the veil, disguised as a human, Evren soon learns that to regain his true power and roof. To, that to regain his true fa true power and form and fulfill his destiny he only needs to convince the one l one little thief to trust him enough to bond completely body mind and soul and then kill them yet the closer the two become the greater the risk to their bo to both their worlds will shatter and see that is something that heavily interests me because again stakes stakes like it's, like you're not like you're like fate because here's the thing fate is a very interesting type of thing where it's like everything you do like I've always believed that everything happens for a reason like that's just something that I've always believed but fate in books the way people the way people do it is always interesting to me because it's like how are you meant to save your world um if you're supposed to kill this person you know and then there's always some sort of loophole and whatnot but sometimes that loophole actually works in the way their fate governs you know so dragonfall again uh i don't know what the second book is going to be called but like here's the listing that i'm probably gonna find later today <laughs> So yeah, next book um, that is with dragons is Game of Thrones. And we all know what Game of Thrones is. Um, if you don't know what Game of Thrones is, I really don't know where you've been for the last 10 years. But like, it has not been on Earth. Because Game of Thrones has been around for a very long time. And it even got a TV show that's actually really popular that ended horrifically. But you know, so let's go. I'm going to read you the description of Game of Thrones from go from a uh, goodreads because i don't own this book just yet i my thing about this my thing about game of thrones is that i am completely and utterly all i want 
is for George R. R. Martin to finish a series and then I will read it. I need to know it does not end the way uh, the show writers ended Game of Thrones. Okay? Okay, cool. All right. Long ago, in a time forgotten, a preternatural event threw the seasons out of balance. In a land where summers can last decades and winters a lifetime, trouble is brewing. The cold is returning, the frozen... Whoa, hold on. The cold is returning, and in the frozen waste of the... In, and in the frozen waste to the north to the north of Winterfell, sin sinister forces are massing beyond the kingdom's pro protective wall. To the south, the king's powers are failing, his most trusted advisor dead under mysterious circumstances, and his enemies emerging from the shadows of the throne. At the center of the conflict lie the Starks of Winterfell, a family as harsh and unyielding as the, as the frozen land they were born to. Now, now Lord Eddard Stark is reluctantly summoned to serve as the king's new hand, an appointment that threatens to sunder not only his family but the kingdom itself. Sweeping from a harsh land of cold to the summertime to a summertime kingdom of epic epicurean plenty, a Game of Thrones tells a tale of lords and ladies, soldiers soldiers and sorcerers, assassins and bastards, who come together in a time of grim omens grim omens. Here an enigmat here an enigmatic band of warriors bear swords of no human steel, a tribe of fierce wildlings carry men off into madness. A cruel a cruel young dragon dragon prince uh, barters his sister to win back his throne. A child is lost in the twilight between life and death, and a determined woman undertakes a treacherous journey to protect all she holds dear. Amid plots, counterplots, tragedy and tra tragedy and betrayal, victory and terror, allies and enemies, the fate of the Starks hangs for hangs hangs perilously in the balance as each side endeavors to win the deadliest of conflicts the game of thrones so here's the thing about game of thrones to me like we all know like beginning of game of thrones is good it's it's great like it is absolutely great but the thing about game of thrones that really gets me is that like even with the dragons the dragons are not the focal point um, the focal point is the fact that the world itself embeds the dragons and embeds all of the people in it to act the way they do. It is so interesting, so immersive. It's just actually amazing. And I'm so mad that they screwed it up. <laughs> this is what happens when you give people creative freedom with something that isn't theirs. Oh my God. For some reason, I'm thinking of Ruby now. Anyways, uh, again, Game of Thrones would recommend because i would recommend the show just like forgetting you know forgetting that uh what exists uh last two seasons exist thank you next book is one again that i own um we have six crimson cranes by uh elizabeth lim so you would never think that this book actually has a dragon in it but it does it has a dragon that's at the bottom of the lake so um and I will read to you the description of this book. Also, the second book is literally called The Dragon's Promise. Shiori, An Shiori Anma, the only princess of Katana. I wasn't able to find Princess of Katana in your Apple Music library. Search on Apple Music or ask for it on a different app. Thanks, here. Shiori Anma, the, the only princess of Kiata, has a secret forbidden magic, has a secret. Forbidden magic runs in her veins, and on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, Shiori loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted to happen, but it also c catches the attentions of Raikama, her stepmother. A sorceress in her own right, Raikama banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes and warning Shiori that she must speak of it to no one. For every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and, on and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught, to taught all her life to contain, no matter what it costs. And again, stakes. I read the first chapter of this book and literally like I laughed. I laughed so hard because this gives me all of the um Chinese um this gives me all of the uh like Chinese uh historical drama vibes that I always wanted. Like literally she talks about literally going to her betrothal ceremony and in a god's ransom worth of silk. <laughs> and she's and, she, and the, also the sibling relationship. It was so cute. But again, dragon has a dragon 
is not fourth wing. Next book is again a book that I own and I'm actually reading at the, at the current moment, Shanghai Immortal by A. Rai Chow. So um, in reading this book, I'm only on chapter nine, but uh, I have not um, seen the book, seen a dragon just yet, but I do know he exists because he's on the cover. Um, so let me to read this. This is an adult book, by the way. <sighs> okay. Half vampire, half fox spirit, all trouble. Pawned by her mother to the hell to the king of hell as a child, Lady Jing is a half vampire, half Huli Jing fox spirit, and all sasshole. As the king's ward, she has spent the past 90 years running errands, dodging the taunts of the spiteful Huli Jing courtiers, and trying to control her explosive temper with varying levels of success. So when Jing overhears courtiers plotting to steal a priceless dragon pearl from the king, she seizes her chance to expose them once and for all. With the help of a gentle mortal tasked with setting up the central bank of hell, Jing embarks on a wild chase for intel first through hell, then mortal Shanghai. But when but when her hijinks put the mortal in danger, she must decide which is more important, avenging her loss of face or letting go of her half-empty approach to life for a chance to experience tenderness and maybe even love. And see, here's the thing. Again, I'm not a huge fan of like romance being like the focal point in books. Like I just have not read romance books just for that. Um, but something that really uh, intrigues me about this book, especially as I've been reading it, is the amount of snark <laughs> that this main character has. It is hilarious. And also the mortal she's toting around, he's like starting to get used to her, even though he's literally terrified of her because, you know, she's a fucking demon. I, <laughs> She's a fucking demon. He's human. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, but he finds her increasingly amusing. And I find it hilarious, exactly uh, uh, hilarious about their dynamic because she's like, yeah, don't touch me. I will literally fucking cut you. And he's like, okay, okay head pats it, like that's that's just how he treats her it's so fucking funny um but yeah a book with dragons that is not fourth wing um again I have yet to see the dragon um just yet but I am assured that it exists because this does follow pretty closely to a lot of Chinese mythology and in Chinese mythology dragons are very like you know present everywhere um so i but i haven't seen one just yet so i assume it's going to come in later because they're uh they're a symbol of the emperor so it's going to come in probably when like some royalty gets involved this book so the next book we have is when women were dragons by kelly barnhill so this book really intrigued me because it's not like fantasy it's more of a realistic fantasy kind of that honestly is really is really very interesting it's an adult book again um so let me read you the description from goodreads alex green is a young girl in a world much like ours expect ex except for its most seminal event the mass dragoning of 1955 when hundreds of thousands of ordinary wives and mothers sprouted wings scales and talons left a trail of fiery de destruction in their path and took to the skies was it their choice? Was it their choice? What will become of those left behind? Why did Alex's beloved Aunt Marla transform but her mother did not? Alex does not know. It's taboo to speak of. Forced into silence, Alex never, m nevertheless must face the consequences of this astonishing event. A mother more protective than ever, an absent and uh, ever an absentee father, and upsetting the upsetting insistence that her aunt never even existed, and watching her beloved cousin B become dangerously obsessed with the forbidden. In this timely, timeless, speculative, no speculative novel, award-winning winning author Kelly Barnhill explores rage, boldly explores rage, memory, and the tyranny of forced limitations. One woman with dragons exposes exposes a world that wants to keep women small their lives and their prospects and examines what happens when they rise in mass and take up the space they deserve so this is obviously a feminist novel but something about it that really intrigues me is the fact that this does not go into detail about like you know why the women were turning into dragons and all of that um at least that's not not from the description at least it doesn't seem like that however um it does uh deal with the consequences and something that very and i understand something that is not lost on me and may be lost on you but i'm going to explain it right now is that the dragoning is quite obviously a metaphor um for women like being fucking fed up completely completely fed up with something i don't know like exactly what topics this this build this uh delves into but i am going to assume that as a woman myself 
uh, that this has to deal with a lot of feminine rage. And honestly, I'm so here for it. <laughs> Okay, so the next book, The Night Ends With Fire by KX Song. It's a series, um, and again, I do plan on picking this book up. Don't know when that's going to happen, but it will. Um, so let me read to you the description and tell you why I think this is, this is going to be a really good one. Infused with magic and romance, a sweeping fantasy adventure inspired by, the le inspired by the legend of Mulan follows a young woman determined to choose her own destiny, even if that means going against everyone she loves. The three kingdoms are at war, but Malin's father refuses to answer the imperial draft. Someone trapped by his opium addiction, he plans to sell Malin off Malin for her dowry. But when Malin discovers her husband-to-be is another violent, ill-tempered man, she, re she realizes that nothing will change for her unless she met unless she takes matters into her own hands. The very next day she disguises she disguises herself as a boy and enlists in her father's place in enlists in her father's place. In the army, Maylan's relentless hard work brings brings her recognition, friendship, and a growing closeness with Sky, a prince turned training partner. But has she simply exchanged one prison for another? As her as her kingdom barrels toward destruction, Maylan begins to have visions of a sea dragon spirit that offers her new power, that offers her true power and freedom, but with a deadly price. With the future of the three kingdoms hanging in the balance, Malin will decide will need to decide whom to trust, whom to trust. Sky, who inspires her loyalty and love, the sea dragon spirit who has his own murky agenda, or an infuriating enemy prince who makes her question everything she wants to know about her kingdom and about her own heart. So this something about this that really very much um like like intrigues me is the fact that A, it's a retelling of Mulan, which you don't see a lot of actually um and b there is so much like actually going on within this like you can tell that there are some politics at play there's a lot of like family dynamic struggles in there as well as well as like uh coercion from all sides it's so actually very interesting and i'm really excited to get into it and again dragons but something that's very interesting to me is that while this book does have a dragon in it the cover of the book uh showcases a phoenix and specifically a phoenix is a symbol of is a symbol of women specifically the empress at least in chinese mythology um so that's a very interesting dichotomy to me so so Next book is Together We Burn by Isabelle Imanez. So I personally, I looked into this book and I was immediately interested. Hold on. I need to, I need to find the description of this real quick because it is so interesting. I'm so excited about this book, literally. Um, I need, I need to buy it. <laughs> Anyways. 18-year-old Zarada Zarvidad is a talented flamenco dancer and daughter of the most famous dragonador in Hispalia. People come for miles to see her father fight in their arena, which will one day be hers, but disaster strikes during their 500th anniversary show. And in the carnage, Zarela's father, Zarela's father is horribly injured. Facing punishment from the dragon guild, Zarela, Zarela must keep the arena, her ancestral home and inheritance, safe from their greedy hands. She has no choice but to take her father's place as the next Dragonador. When the infuriatingly handsome dragon hunter Arturo Diaz de Montserrat withholds his help, she refuses to take no, and no for an answer. But even if he agrees, there's someone out to ruin the ruin the Zalvidar family, and Zarada will have to will have to do whatever it takes in order to prevent the dragon guild from taking away her birthright. An ancient city played by dragon played by dragons. A flamenco dancer determined to save her ancestral home. A dragon hunter refusing to teach her, her teach her his ways. They don't want each other, but they need each other, and without him her world will burn. I'm so excited. The only and one of the reasons I am so excited is literally just because like this has such interesting spanish elements because you would never think because dragonador is obviously a play on matador which is the bull which is like the bull play guy you know the guy with the red flag in the arena with the bull you know that it's a play on that and like there are dragon hunters instead of dragon riders i don't know any of what's going on here however i want it to so bad and also the culture of flamenco dancing gimme like literally just give me give me this is like pretty much the first time like this is one of the only books i think that tr that incorporate dragons into a completely different culture than you would think it's so it's 
sounds so good sounds so interesting and also Isabel Lebanez Isabel Lebanez honestly I haven't even read what the river knows yet however I do love her writing style I really do it's so good so 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 good and our last book is Fire with Fire by Destiny Soria so this book specifically I wanted to get as well um but I just never really picked it up um I never really found like the correct moment to pick it up so but this book is actually really interesting so let me read you the description Danny and Eden Rivera R Rivera were both born to kill dragons but the sisters could not be more different for Danny dragon slayer dragon slaying takes a backseat to a normal high school life while Eden prioritizes training above everything else yet they agree on one thing it's kill or be killed where dragons are concerned until Danny comes face to face with one and forges a rare magical rare and magical bond with him as she gets to know Nox she realizes that everything she would talk Everything she thought she knew about dragons is wrong. What well, with Danny lost to the dragons, Eden, Eden turns to the mysterious and alluring sorcerers to help save her sister. Now on opposite sides of the conflict, the sisters will do whatever it takes to save the other. But the two are playing with magic that is more dangerous than they know. And there is another more powerful enemy waiting for them both in the shadows. See, this isn't even like about like sisterly like uh sisterly like differences. This isn't even like about any amount of like hey this is right this is wrong no 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 not even not even this is literally just like hey i want to protect my sister and she's like but hey maybe this isn't so bad and she's like yeah but didn't you agree with me last month <laughs> it's fun and then also the politics in between there as well and then the magical aspect of it everything to me absolutely everything to me so yes i uh again dragons uh dragons not in a culture that you would ever really think about but again dragon hunters we had a very good actually like a mix now that i'm thinking about it of like between dragon writers and dragon hunters blah 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 blah. you know all of that it's actually very interesting to me now now that i'm thinking about it all right <laughs> But anyways, guys, that brings this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. I post weekly on this channel, so don't miss out. Also, if you want to see more of my content, um, leave me comments down below. Uh, what you want to see from me, what books I should put on my TBR, what books I should move up my TBR. Uh, tell me what you're reading in the comments or just say hi. I always get really excited when I see your guys' comments. It makes me so happy and appreciated. Anyways, guys, I love you. Bye.